Alright guys, now that we know the basics of how to set up a really simple web server, what I want to do is I want to introduce you guys to a server framework called Connect. So a lot of the functionality that we would commonly write to handle user requests has already been written for us and packaged up into a nice framework called Connect. So how do we install the Connect module? Well, the first thing that we need to do is go down to this terminal right here and you guys are gonna um, you know probably cry when you see how easy this is type npm install connect and that's it what this is gonna do is it's gonna go on the internet look for this package called connect it already knows exactly where to go download it and install it and configure it with your project so check this out we can now use connect one line of code how easy was that now this little installer right here it's actually I don't want to say more complex but we have some additional options and what I'm gonna do is devote an entirely new tutorial to showing you guys how to use it and all the different options and commands you can use but for right now check it out again what that did is it went and downloaded and installed connect so if you look in your node underscore modules directory we now have it all right there pretty stinking awesome did a lot for one line of code eh? alright so now let's figure out how to use this module and what it's all about alright so the first thing we need to do is actually just require it import it so require of course it's called connect and in this example what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna use HTTP from the last tutorial so before we can start using this connect framework the first thing we need to do is we need to create a connect dispatcher now this is pretty much the core connect object and you can think of it as a function that just takes the request and response arguments so whenever the user makes a request to your server it's gonna look to this right here to pretty much determine how it wants to handle that request so if you just name it app and this is actually pretty standard to name an app in all the connect examples online that's what they do so I thought might as well follow convention again since this is essentially just a function that takes the request and response argument whenever we're setting up our server HTTP create server what we can do and actually I probably typed that too fast alright so as you can see create server it takes a request listener as an argument so that argument is actually this object right here simple enough and now of course we need to give it a port to listen on I think last tutorial we used AAAA might as well stick with that one and after our server is up and running might as well log something out to verify it server is running so right now if we try to connect to our server nothing is happening but if we run this bad boy then check it out so we have a connection but <laughs> right now it says cannot get forward slash this means that it can't even get the home page because obviously we uh you know we just have like the really bare basics right now all right let me adjust a little bit all right so essentially like I said whenever we connect to the website to our server what it's gonna do is in our code it's gonna look to app right here to say how do you want me to handle this request that is embarrassing. Um, okay, so let's continue here. Pretend that didn't happen. All right. So the first thing that we can do is we can use a method called use. So inside here, we write a little chunk of code, and the code to handle user requests is called middleware. So at first, let me just make something really, really easy. We'll call a function called do first, and of course, these functions they take the request which is the user request the response if I could type which is the response that we're sending back and they also take a third optional parameter called next and I'll show you guys in like two minutes why we need this third parameter so just so we can have something going on whenever they request you know whenever they make a request on a server we'll just do something really stupid and log out the word bacon to the terminal. Alright. So 
that is pretty much how we can set all that up again we don't even use the request response or next right now I'm just showing you guys a real quick example servers running we just refresh the page and check it out it says bacon pretty stupid it seems like we could do that before so what is one of the benefits of using connect well one of the reasons people like this is because you can actually take this middleware and stack it on top of each other so in other words whenever you have a stack of middleware these functions can get executed one by one one after each other so you can actually have a function called do first and another one called do second now that's where this next parameter comes in and actually let me copy this real quick all right so now we have two pieces of code, two functions that we want to run do first and do second. So if we type next and let's for the second one we'll just log out tuna. Alright. So what's going on here? What is this next keyword? What is this stack and nonsense I was talking about? Check this out. Actually let me stop that. It's annoying me. Alright, not running. Beautiful. Alright. So whenever the user connects to our website, whenever they make a request to our server, what's going to happen is it's going to say, okay, app, how do you want me to handle this? So it's going to go up to this app object and it says, you obviously want me to use this function do first. So what it's going to do is it's going to run first, do first, and then it's going to look for a method called next. If it has this method, then it's going to go to the next object in the stack, which is do second. So hopefully, if I didn't you know, do anything stupid or forget any semicolons, whenever I run this and the user makes a request, it's going to call bacon, go to the next one, which is do second, and tuna. So let's see what's going on. Bacon and tuna. Now again, you don't always have to have this next right here. What you can do is you can actually make some kind of logic. Again, um, this would typically be something like you're gonna test if the user like has permission to do this thing or that but if they actually <laughs> I guess that's a Python code I'm a little used to type in Python but what you can do is you can actually decide if you want to call this next method or not so let me clear this out and run this again and let's make another request so again if you don't call it then of course this second object in the stack it never gets called and that's why tuna was never written alright so that was pretty interesting I guess but not really that useful still don't really understand why connect is so popular well to be honest that was a uh, you know just a really simple demo the reason that people love using connect is actually for this in addition to just using you know some plain old middleware what you can also do is have an optional argument of a path so let's say that you had a couple different pages on your website this was the home page it's not running right now but we'll say that we have like a uh, a profile page and like a forum whatever so what you can do is you can actually type the path profile and then we'll just make a function called profile after this so essentially what's going to happen here is whenever the user makes a request for the profile page you're gonna call a function called profile so this might be like displaying the profile picture or whatever so function profile I'll just say uh, in response so again I'm not actually gonna display a picture or anything I'll just log out like um, user requested profile or something all right so again, whenever they go to their profile, it will run this function. And just so I can show you guys that we can have more than one, we'll say that we have a forum as well. Make another function called forum. And we'll say user requested forum. All right, so now let's kick this off and check it out. So our home page, again, nothing new there. However, if we go to profile, and let me show you guys this so we don't have anything logged out right now however I'm gonna go to profile hit enter and check it out user requested profile 
and it'll be the same thing for forum again what we would do here is actually display something on the screen for them but that is pretty much how we would handle different um, user requests depending on the path so eventually what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using logic similar to this to inspect the path to figure out what request is the user making what web page are they trying to go to and then we're going to be able to call a function that displays the HTML, the CSS and all the brains behind our app in a nice neat way. So there you go. Thank you guys for watching and don't know what I'm going to be talking about in the next video but it's going to be awesome so I'll see you then.